it's Oscar season. The nominations are in, so which composer will take on best original score in 2024? It's all to play for, of course, but first, let's recap the last 10 years of Oscar-winning movie soundtracks. In 2014, it was Stephen Price's score for Alphonse Cuaron's Gravity. Uh, apparently, Stephen Price blew up a synth while processing a trumpet sound for the movie that he wasn't totally happy with. He's quoted as saying, it made a great indescribable and unrepeatable sound and ended up being one of his favorite parts of the score. So listen out for that. In 2015, Alexander Desplat won with his score to the Grand Budapest Hotel. I'm afraid that's me, darling. Now, Desplat gathered 50 French and Russian balalaika players and two translators to record this score. The score also features zithers, cymbaloms, and gigantic alpine horns, which I think real music lovers can hear. In 2016, the great Italian film maestro Ennio Morricone finally took home the big award for The Hateful Eight. Morricone's first competitive Oscar at 87 years old, and he was the oldest winner in Oscars history at that time. Morricone wrote only 25 minutes of music for this film. The rest he had originally written for 1982's The Thing that had gone unused because they'd gone with the score by John Carpenter. 2017 saw Justin Hurwitz win for La La Land. The soundtrack process for that film was lengthy and very involved. Apparently, Justin Hurwitz sent more than 1,900 piano demos to the writer-director Damien Chazelle, who turned the best ones into the themes for the film, then tested the melodies on the production team, and if they still liked it after several weeks or indeed months, Hurwitz would then go away and start to orchestrate it. If you've seen the film, you'll know that Wayne Gosling took piano lessons to prepare for it. Uh, he was studying for a few hours a day, six days a week, and practicing on top of that. And as a result, his hard work paid off. There are no piano or hand doubles in the movie, no CGI, and the piano scenes are actually mostly shot in long takes. So that really is Ryan at work. Into 2018 now, and the winning score was The Shape of Water by Alexandra Desplat, one of my favorites. The film's director, Guillermo del Toro, first spoke to Desplat about a love story between a fish man and a mute over sushi, which seems appropriate. Desplat's score uses pianos and flutes to capture the sounds of water, which he likens to growing up in the Caribbean as a teenager. For him, submersion in water and being in love are very similar feelings. In 2019, the statue went to Ludwig Göransson for his score to Black Panther. The Swedish composer's inspirations were wide ranging for that movie, from a research trip to Senegal and South Africa, where he encountered the talking drum, to J.S. Bach, superhero score epics, and his own work as a producer for Childish Gambino, which is of course the rap alter ego of actor Donald Glover. Named after another great musician, Ludwig van Beethoven, no less, it was not only his first win, but Goddardson's first nomination. It could well be turning into his second this year, of course, because he's nominated for Oppenheimer. In 2020, our winner was Joker by the remarkable Icelandic composer Hilda Gudnadottir. Hilda Gudnadottir's score actually shaped one of the key moments of the film, that infamous bathroom dancing where Joaquin Phoenix fully transforms into the Joker for the first time. She'd already written the theme, apparently, which was played on set during filming. Now, there wasn't originally supposed to be a dancing duty there, but Phoenix, hearing the music, improvised it, and it stuck. In 2021, John Baptiste, Trent Reznor, and Atticus Ross took home the best score gong for Soul. Now, this Oscar made Baptiste the second black composer to win in 99 years of the award's history. For a film, of course, which featured Pixar's first black lead character, it's a marvel of animation. Animators analyze video footage of Baptiste playing piano to see how his hands and fingers move. Together with a color map of the keys being played, they were then able to build a note-perfect animation. In 2022, the accolade went to Hans Zimmer for June. Come with me. Zimmer worked with musician and sculptor Chaz Smith, who built a Californian metal house, which doubles as a musical instrument, which is then heard on the soundtrack. Zimmer's search for unusual sounds went so far as to him making flutes out of PVC pipes to create brand new sounds. 2023's winner was All Quiet on the Western Front by Volker Bertelmann. Volker Bertelmann used a century-old harmonium owned by his great-grandmother to play three huge distorted notes. The director, Edward Berger's only instruction to Bertelmann was that he wanted a score that destroyed the picture rather than complementing it. Something for the main protagonist to represent the feeling in his stomach while in the trenches and to feature snare drums played by somebody who can't play the snares. That's pretty specific. 
So who will win in 2024? Will it be Laura Cartman uh, for American Fiction? Or will it be our old friend John Williams for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? He broke his own record this year for the most nominations for a living person. He has had a total of 54 nods. Might it be Robbie Robertson for Killers of the Flower Moon? He is the second composer to receive a posthumous Oscar nomination for a Scorsese film. Or could it be Ludwig Goddenson for Oppenheimer? And this, of course, would be his second Oscar. Or might it be newcomer Jerskin Fendricks for Poor Things? This is his first film score and, of course, therefore, his first Oscar nomination. So could it be a hat-trick with it's his first win as well? All, of course, will be revealed soon. But for more great movie music in the meantime, join me every Friday and Saturday night for Classic FM at the Movies, 7pm on Classic FM.